Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a receiver coil to receive the electricity from my magnifying transmitter. So currently the magnifying transmitter is tuned to transmit at 168 kilohertz or 168,000 hertz. So to wind your receiving coil, you will want to wind it on some type of insulating cylinder form. I will be winding my receiver coil on this quick tube, which I purchased at the Home Depot. So before you start winding your receiving coil, you will want to measure the circumference of your coil form. The circumference of this coil form is 25 inches. Now poke three small holes two inches above the bottom of the coil form. I used a small nail to poke these holes. In my past experiments, I found that the best results on the receiver coils were obtained with smaller magnet wire. So make the primary out of smaller magnet wire. I will be using 26 gauge copper magnet wire. Only use insulated wire for the primary. So to make your receiving coil receive the electricity from my magnifying transmitter, the primary of the receiving coil needs to be a fourth of the wavelength of the frequency of the magnifying transmitter. This would be 1,464.2857 feet of wire or 17,571.4285 inches of wire. You may have to add or subtract a little bit of wire until the coil is in resonance. If you have calculated the circumference of your coil form in inches, you will want to divide this number right here by your circumference to get the number of turns you will need. This number is approximate. You may need a tiny bit more or a tiny bit less than this. So for a coil with a circumference of 25 inches, you will need approximately 703 turns. Now I'm going to wind the primary. So to start winding the coil form, put the wire through the three holes you just poked in the coil form to hold the wire secure. Here's an example of the primary of the receiving coil. The bottom of it should be grounded to the earth. This coil is 704 turns. I wound it a little over the wavelength so I could cut the wire little by little to get it in resonance. Here's what a finished receiver coil looks like. Here's where you connect the things you want to power. This is the secondary. If you do this, you may be able to light a neon light bulb on your receiving coil, but you'll definitely be able to light a three volt LED.